Hey folks, so today I'm going to be walking you through making a map for map vember. So the prompt for today was waterfall. And I have set up my own kind of uh, brush library. I'm using Procreate. Uh, that is brushes I usually use. So to start off, I'm getting the drawing guide all set up. Uh, I've done 140 pixels per square, uh, I think. I hope this is the right setting um, to be able to use on roll 20. And I'm just adjusting the opacity and the color. There's also um, isometric and perspective. I'm just doing a grid for this one. I might try getting into isometric later on in the month. Okay, so the first thing I do is on this first layer, I just kind of real quickly sketch in kind of about where I want things to go. One nice thing with Procreate is uh, if you double tap with two fingers, it undoes, <laughs> or it's the undo button. Um, so if I, you draw a line that you don't like, you can quickly take it away without having to erase. Now I'm going through on a new layer and I'm drawing in the lines, the actual lines that I'll have. Um, try and take my time with doing cliffs or uh, cavern edges or stuff like that, I kind of try and like have a little bit of a squiggle to it. Sorry if my head's in the way here. Um, and all that. And just going through a couple spots where I realized I wanted the uh, cliff edge to kind of hang over a little bit from where the water is. So I'm going back and re erasing and redrawing. And there we go. So I got rid of the sketch lines and now I'm going in with a new layer and I'm laying in the water. Just painting this in. Sometimes going back through with the eraser if I drew too much and filling this in. <laughs> Later on I did realize I could just kind of draw the outline and then drag and drop a uh, color. But sometimes it's nice to just sit and color and relax. So I do try to kind of rough in all of the colors first. Um, and this is just the process I've been using on these first couple of days for Matt Vember. Uh, I might find I change things as the month goes on, but I thought I'd share how I've kind of been starting the month. All right, so here you can see I do the drag and drop and hey, that's so much faster. So I decided I'm naming some of these layers and reorganizing them. And now I'm going through in a separate layer and painting in all of the ground. Nice thing with that is I don't have to worry about being super precise on that. And now I'm gonna go through and yeah, I'm drawing all of the objects. So I'm drawing some trees and some bushes and rocks, kind of doing some squiggly, trying to make it look organic, <laughs> doing some overlapping trees as well. And if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know and I might do a, another one later on in the month, see if my style's changed, if I've learned anything over doing this month of maps. And uh, just so you know, I have sped this up about four times speed. Uh, this whole thing took me about an hour. So, you know, you can definitely spend a lot more time, do a lot more detail, but I wanted to do just kind of a quick fun encounter map. And one thing when I was reading through the prompts, I thought of uh, for waterfall, um, kind of inspired to have like a harpy nest or something. There, those squiggly lines that I ended up going through and erasing later on. Right there. <laughs> but I was inspired kind of to do maybe like a harpy's nest, uh, have a little bit of a story to this encounter. Um, harpy, griffin, something like that. Something big that can fly, but also is around water. So I'm doing a bunch of rocks and kind of small boulders around the edge. The water. Uh, now I'm going back in and painting the trees, adjusting the color because I thought it was a little too bright. I'll actually go back in with that color a little later to add some texture. And so far my style has been a bit of this kind of uh, I guess you'd call it maybe a little bit more cartoonish uh, than realistic um, for my map making style. Uh, you know, I might find that changes through the month. But uh, two minute tabletop is definitely a uh, 
I'll try and remember to put a link in the description. Inspiration for me, I have been kind of looking around on Instagram and Twitter and just searching on the web to get inspiration from various other cartographers out there. It is fun to paint in these things. And the layer I'm painting on is under the layer for the lines. I found this just gives, it gives a little bit cleaner um, of a look. I don't have to worry about trying to stay within the lines and not paint over. It gives it that nice crispness. So I'm going through and painting in all of the bits. And every now and then I will go through and kind of do sections at a time, depending on the map if I don't have a good idea beforehand. All right, so now I'm doing the water and um, trying to figure out how to make it look like, uh, give some texture and motion to the water. So I did go ahead and I painted that top part because it was like, oh, there's gonna be a definite difference between it. And then I realized if I do a separate layer for that top water section and bottom water section, then I can get those kind of nice clean lines and transition between them and um, help create that, whoop, sorry about mic bump, help create that um, texture and, texture is the wrong word, height, uh, those different levels to it. So now I'm going back through and trying to add in that like frothing water look with a couple different colors of blue and going almost to a white. I found that having kind of those different uh, hard lines and stuff like that can help with creating different heights. Going through and painting the grass, trying to decide on color. I kept be having like super neon grass and was like, oh, this is a little maybe too cartoony than what I want. Trying to leave a little bit of space where there's a shoreline. I just figured like, you know, you oftentimes see grass kind of maybe doesn't grow all the way to a cliff edge or all the way to a shoreline just as the cliff is falling in. Here I'm going through and I'm painting in a shadow again to help add some of that uh, dimension uh, to the uh, cliff. So you can see, okay, this is the higher part and this is the lower part. <laughs> adding a little bit of texture. I've just found adding just a slightly darker or slightly large lighter um, and doing Kind of a bumping the opacity down again helps add some nice texture there. I've been having fun with this challenge, playing around with different brushes. This is a different uh, brush I'm using for the trees than I've tried before. And that's one of the fun things about doing like a 30 day challenge is it's like, okay, you play around, figure out what you like, what you don't like, um, what works for you. And because you're going to be painting 30 things, um, you know, you got a lot of time to play. This is a technique I like doing for rocks of having this like kind of very brighter, harder line, um, kind of where the, the sun is hitting it. And now I'm going through and doing a bunch of squigglies to have this uh, nest looking area. And I also decided to draw in some bones and like a pile of gold and I um, was trying to do a shield and then decided, eh, I'll just do a dagger. My little skull, guys. I don't know why, but I really enjoy drawing skulls with one eye slightly bigger. I, it, it just makes it fun and goofy. Coloring those in and I'll add a little bit of shading to give them a little bit more depth. I like adding a few of these little details in. I feel like it, it makes the map have a bit of a story that it's not just, okay, here's a waterfall with some trees, but hey, there's a nest and some bones and some gold coins. So, you know, maybe like a harpy lives here and they've carried off their prey or whatever it is. 
So here I was trying to play around with adding some color to this nest. I did not end up liking this, and that's the nice thing about doing something digitally. It makes it easy to undo. I did end up using this um, spray paint spackle uh, flecking look. I like doing that for texturing. Um, it also works really well for grass. I used white, so you know, if it's a bird, poop. So the fi finishing touch is going in and adding in the line. So I trace over the drawing guide. I, I decided instead of white, I wanted to go with like a dark gray. And the nice thing with Procreate is they have a um, draw, if you have drawing assist on, if you draw a line and hold it, it will snap into a straight line. Uh, so I just do the whole thing and then I turn it and do the whole thing again. Um, so that helps create because that uh, grid that you've put in as the drawing guide won't actually export. Or if it does, I have not figured out how to do that yet. And then I'll go back in and adjust the opacity on that because that's a pretty dark grid right there. So if you go to adjustments, slide the opacity down to where you want it and there you have it. There is the uh, finished map. Pretty happy with it. Uh, if you follow us on Twitter and Instagram, you can go check out uh, all of my map Vember maps there. Um, and uh, if you are interested in getting some of these maps as downloads, you can become a patron. I'll be posting these uh, throughout the month and leading into the next couple of months as downloads for some of our patron exclusive content. A big thanks to our patrons, especially Lainey. If you want to support our channel, you can head over to our Patreon page and check out the perks of being a patron. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this kind of video and want to see more of us, uh, or in this case, listen to more of us. All right, I'll see you next time on Rural Fair Initiative. Bye.